of something that's a word that's called half-hearted. Which means lacking in heart, spirit, or interest. So what does it mean when you feel like, you know, so what does it feel like to do something half-hearted? Eh, meh, yeah. <laughs> no words, just feeling, right? <laughs> and what's it like to do anything when your heart isn't in it? What's your energy like? You have any experience with that? Yeah? And can you tell when others are doing things half-hearted? Yes. Especially as a mother right? <laughs> when you're working with your kids sometimes. <laughs> and in contrast, when your heart is in something, then what? What do you feel? Joy, passion, enthusiasm, exhilaration, energy, fulfillment. Yeah, you feel the heart, excited, creative, attentive, probably leaning in, engaged, guided. Yeah. So on, on a regular basis, for those of you that don't know, my other job is at the university. And we live in the academic world. <laughs> now, <laughs> that, that's a really good lean in. Because of course at the university we're focused on the mind and teaching people how to think critically, and develop their mind, indeed. And I'm aware of that. That's why I sort of like the balance between leading this center and being at the university, right? It's a balance between the mind and the heart. And, um, you know, a lot of times, yes, it's true that at the university uh, that there are several of us that um, will get in our heads. What does that mean? Where, where do you think the energy moves when we're in our heads? Uh-huh, into logic. Now, sometimes coming to an understanding, is it all about logic? And that's what I like to call wisdom, right? The wisdom between the wholeness of who we are, mind, body, spirit, soul, however you want to use those words. Now, um, on November 7th, the university students uh, ran something called a town hall. Have, have any of you experienced that? Okay, well, they usually do advertise it a little bit, and um, uh, the students are actually uh, creating some sessions where they've had to do some research, uh, usually in political topics, but doesn't have to be. And uh, then they moderate some sessions uh, to encourage students to share their research with interested participants and amongst themselves. And um, th then the students conclude an evening in an action symposium with members of the campus and the community serving as consultants to assist with the next steps in the research and a development of a civic action plan. Now, that requires both head and heart. Why is that? Well, the head was moving more into the, what is this dimension? What is this space? You know, whether you're talking about health care plans or housing or the homeless, moving yourself into that domain and expanding what you think you already know, opening your mind, allowing for the movement of your mind, which then can move your heart. And vice versa, if your heart is not in it, then is there going to be any energy in that? Really, the expansion won't happen if your heart is not engaged in that. Now. Um, just to give you a, a result of that, the town hall, uh, here's some quotes from the students. The town hall really inspired me to get more involved in my community and stay educated on current politics. I was a little intimidated in the beginning of the discussion, but once I started speaking up, I felt empowered. Now that has a whole lot of spiritual domain in that, mean, dimensions in that, meaning they opened their mind, they shared with others, they, again, expanded and moved their heart. 
And when they moved their heart, then they felt empowered and they said, then it inspired me to get more involved in my community. You feel that synergy, the movement between the mind and the heart moving together? Another student said, this experience, me, experience made me want to go out and start making a difference. I think it was a great way to light a spark and get people interested in taking action. You notice that was a community event. It's not that we can't, uh, you know, there's a saying that says, uh, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And this essence of bringing community together to stir the mind and the heart to then move us into action. So um, all of this, of course, is very important for our future. And I would encourage any of you uh, interested in this to join the next time that it comes around. So yes, uh, as universities have been around for hundreds of years, they've taught us how to use our minds. And Chico State does have a special feel to it. Um, uh, there are a lot of aspects of uh, Chico based on multiple uh, cultures at different universities. So I'm not saying that Chico doesn't have heart. There is a lot of heart there because people are passionate about opening people's minds to other ways of seeing the world, which is important for all of us. And that's not hard to see when we look at our politics. So, and I'm not a very political person, but just in general, the environment that we're in. So, what does the university teach regarding the heart? I found an LA Times article from November 2017, so two years ago. The Dalai Lama wrote an article entitled, We Need an Education of the Heart. He's encouraging all levels of education to consider teaching more about the heart. In today's times, it's very easy to see the world is more, than, more interconnected than it has ever been because the changes in communication, transportation, our world economy, it's more obvious that we are all interconnected and interdependent on one another. And of course, in our campaign for Loving Mother Earth, we are aware that there are no national boundaries for climate change, is there? If that doesn't speak to the oneness that we are. One human race living on one planet. Yes, we all coexist together in many different ecosystems across the Earth. That diversity is vital to our physical existence, but it is, it, the physical existence doesn't happen just out of itself. It's consciousness. It's becoming aware of. So the da Dalai Lama continues to use the arguments that I've just mentioned to talk about the importance of global secular ethics. And he literally says, meaning, and, and you all realize he's the leader of the Tibetan spiritual path, Meaning we must go beyond the traditional religions and national self-interests, educating our hearts on love, compassion, justice, forgiveness, mindfulness, and peace. That tickles me in a lot of different ways. For those of you that know science of mind, yes, we believe in all spiritual paths, that they all have threads of truth. And we're in a very unique time in really the history of humans. Meaning there may have been different religions scattered across the world. But when you think about the times that, um, you know, Jesus was not a Christian, Buddha was not a Buddhist, um, hello, Muhammad was not a Muslim. These were people who demonstrated a consciousness with love, compassion, justice, forgiveness, mindfulness, and peace. And that's really the message which, as the Dalai Lama so appropriately says, goes beyond the dogmas and the creeds. This is ba basically about being human, which means knowing the essence of our heart. 
leading with our hearts. He is actually encouraging all of us to support a worldwide initiative, initiative for educating not just the mind, but also the emphasis on the heart. What about in our politics today? We must engage our hearts to embody the connection that we have with one another, focusing on what unifies us, not what separates us. And the Dalai Lama says, I see with ever greater clarity that our well-being depends not on religion, but on our innate human nature to care for and have compassion for one another. This is the education of the heart. Do we do any of that here? All the time. Now, as uh, an education of the heart, it means learning to know your heart. And that may seem like, well, of course I know my heart. But the science of mind classes and doing your spiritual practice, meditation, prayer, actually open you to discovering and expanding more of who you are. So do you really know what's in your heart every day? <coughs> when you know who you are, then like the students, you will be inspired to connect with others. And that's what this community is about. Now, in my family, uh, when I left home about uh, the age of 18, we didn't really talk about our feelings much. Matter of fact, I probably would have said, whatever your feelings, happy, sad, or mad. Does anybody remember those posters that had little smiley faces of 20,000 different? Mm -hmm. I had those. Because I needed to expand my awareness of my heart. We have subconsciously adopted beliefs that may be what we call race consciousness, that is, those things that people are saying. I did a, a, a self-sustainability uh, presentation uh, to students two years ago at the sustainability conference at the university. And I, I shared a presentation, and one of the things I said is, you don't have to believe everything your mind tells you. And a student came up to me afterwards and said, you just taught me a whole new freedom. Your mind and your heart are not necessarily the same thing, but need to work together to expand your knowingness of your truth, to move you higher in consciousness about this truth. So that's what we do here. And yes, I am seeding that in January. We have science of mind classes starting. <clears throat> the foundations class to learn a little bit more about what science of mind is. And the self mastery class. Which is about give, give me some structure so that I can come together in community to learn more about who I really am. To connect with others in experiencing who I am. In other words, how to leave, how to know and therefore be able to lead from your heart. Now we understand the power of thought here at the Center for Spiritual Living, Chico. But you know my favorite metaphor and you've heard me say it before. You can have it all in your head, but that's like having a steering wheel without the gas pedal. <laughs> Makes kids happy. <laughs> right? And they're steering around in the, you know, in the carnival. But your heart and your head have to be aligned and engaged in order to really laser focus and move yourself forward in making a difference for yourself in your own life and for your community. So I want to make sure that you understand understanding compassion. Is that the same thing as being compassionate? Understanding justice and practicing justice, is that the same? Understanding forgiveness, but do you forgive? Understanding peace, 
And when you do understand peace, it's about embodying it and emanating it. The beingness of it, which is your heart radiating out. And more and more science, science of mind, is showing that. The Heart Math Institute, if you've ever been to that website, they are studying the science that our heart emanates energy around us. So yes, when you walk into the room, you make a difference in that chemistry. Yes, you are a light. Quantum physics, you are a light. So when Jesus said, I am the light of the world, repeat after me, I am the light of the world. Yes, you are the light of the world. We use science of mind treatment as a very uh, affirmative power of prayer so that you're not just telling yourself stories, but that you're working in your science of mind treatment to align yourself, just like we did in the healing meditation, what is the truth? And as Randy began, what is the principle that you are making choices from? Whatever you choose to do in your day, whatever you choose to express with others, whatever you choose to create, what's the principle you are coming from? That is beginning with truth, with the first cause. Because what tends to happen to all of us is we're living our life in society and we're moving around like a ping pong ball based on I talk to you, I talk to you, I talk to you, and now here's what's in my mind. And now I'm just going to go do something based on what I've heard, what I've seen, and not coming back to the spiritual truth, knowing your heart, knowing your gifts. Thank you, Rod. Thank you, Sharon and Al for the uh, drumming. Thank you all for your voice. Knowing your gifts and offering your gifts, that is leading from the heart. Ernest Holmes from the Science of Mind textbook says, in an intelligent study of the teachings of the science of mind, we come to understand that all is love and yet all is love. Uh, law, sorry. Say that again. We come to understand that all is love and yet all is law. Love runs through law. And you can think of law as principles. You can think of law like gravity. We can use gravity to bounce a ball. Love is divine givingness. Law is the way it happens. Love is spontaneous. Law is impersonal. We should study the nature of reality with a capital R with all of this in mind. And in this way, we shall avoid the grave mistakes, either viewing life as made up only of spontaneously, spontaneous actions, irrespective of law and order. So, it begins first cause with love, which begins with you knowing your heart. And knowing your heart, you may say, I've lived for X number of years, I know my heart, but there's more to know. And we want to be here to support you. We want to be here to explore with you, to bond with you, to connect with you, as we all learn more about how to lead from the heart. Namaste. Namaste. And now, our special guest.